I have a Sonoff S26 with an unusual fault. It's been flashed with Tasmota. When I turn the other devices on using the routine, this one doesn't come on. Or it may come on, or it may come on after a while. If it does come on, it stays on for a period of time, then randomly turns itself off, and then turns itself back on again. Let's demonstrate that uh, that little issue to you now. So if I, uh, I plug this in, and that's it, it's connected up to my uh, local network. And if I use uh, Tasma Admin to turn it on, you can see with the green light that it comes on, I can turn it off. But you may notice there's no click from the relay. So it could be that the relay is goosed. Now what I have noticed is that if I turn it on and then turn it off with the button, sometimes, but not always, sometimes I get a red light and I hear the relay click. Because I'm making a video, it's not going to do it now. But it's intermittent anyway, so there's obviously a problem. Whatever it is, it's not turning on and off. So uh, let's have a look inside. So that's the Sonoff S26 taken apart. Um, so let's get rid of this lot. And let's have a closer look at this. So I'm having to video this on my phone and it's not brilliant. So what I've done, I've taken some photographs of this and we'll have a look at the photographs and uh, I give you some of my thoughts. So this is the top side of the S26 with the high voltage side of the board, the low voltage side of the board, and then the daughter board carrying the ESP8266 chip. So this is the underside of the board, again the high voltage side and the low voltage side with the uh, regulator and the connections for the daughter board. So let's zoom in on that and uh, have a look if there's anything obvious. And uh, if you look carefully, you see a couple of uh, sloppy bits of work on this board if you look at j3 and again across the right side of the board you see some really really poor quality control from sonoff and a couple of bits of really bad soldering so let's investigate those okay so at this point we could just do a quick repair touch that pad up get rid of that mess on the right hand side well that's not really critical that's all on the ground plane anyway just untidy but there's no fun in that so let's do a bit more investigation so what we know about the, the Sonoff switch is essentially they're just a, a device that allows a relay to switch the live line on and off. But um, what else do we know? So there has to be some high voltage side of dropping that voltage down to a lower voltage, which is going to produce about 5 volts. That then goes on to some sort of rectification stage. Uh, in this case, using the LM1117, produce 3.3 volts for the ESP. And then the ESP uses a GPIO, or several GPIOs, to switch LEDs and relays. But the GPIO voltage is only 3.3 volts, and it's about 17 milliamps. So it's not enough for a relay, so there has to be something else in there, some sort of relay control circuit. So um, that seems like a reasonable block diagram. Let's see what we can discover a little bit more about our, about our board and, uh, and the daughter board, and uh, we'll take it from there. So I couldn't find a lot of information on the S26. But what we do have is the um, module configuration from Tasmota, which shows the relays on GPIO 12. This image from the Not Enough Tech website, uh, Matt very kindly gave me permission to reproduce this here in this video, um, identifies where GPIO 12 comes out. Uh, if you haven't seen the Not Enough Tech website or you haven't seen Matt's excellent YouTube channel, I'll leave links to those in the description be below. And I, I recommend you have a good look at those because he does some really good stuff. So I took the daughter board off completely. The soldering on it was, was dreadful. Um, and this is a close up of the daughter board. And you can see that uh, pad for pin 12. And that goes off through this small via here through the PCB and comes out on the other side near the uh, voltage input pad. Now I apologize for the quality of the images. I'm trying to do this on my phone. Um, I don't have any fancy cameras. So this is about the best I can manage. So uh, sorry, you're gonna have to live with it. And this little via then goes off on this track, runs off underneath the silkscreen printing and goes to pin 10 on the ESP device. So what's pin 10? Well, if we go to the um, data sheet for the ESP8266, we can see P pin 10 is something called MTDI, uh, which doesn't mean a lot to me, 
But again, if we look at the data sheet, we can see pin 10 MTDI is actually GPIO 12. So that's definitely the pad that's given us the output from the chip. Uh, and that's definitely the area that's going to be giving us problems on this board. So what's going on from here then? So we know that this pin is coming out on, on J3. We can see it's really badly soldered. And, and as I said, I've taken this daughter board out so I can resolder it on properly. Um, so let's have a look at this pathway here from J3 down to how it actually operates the relay. Now, there's not a lot of, lot of information on the S26, but we do have some information from the Expressive web, uh, website on um, the Sonoff Basic. And there's this snapshot from the block diagram for the Sonoff Basic that shows you this little circuit here. And where it says PWMO, I believe that's the output from the uh, ESP device, that's coming in through a current limiting resistor R19 to the gate of the FET, the 2N7002 FET. The other relay, R20 in this particular case, is, uh, is actually tagging that uh, gate to, uh, to ground, so it's, a, it's holding it low, so the relay doesn't come on when there's no signal there. But when a, a voltage comes down there, it will develop across R20, the current will be limited by R19, and it will turn on the FET. The FET then provides a ground path for the relay and allows the relay to switch on. D2 is just a flyback diode because we're dealing with the inductive load in terms of the relay coil. And then pins two and three on the relay are the, are the pins that are going to switch the live, uh, the live line for our supply. So we'll see if that relates to what we've got on the S26. Just do a quick recap on these connections. Red on 5 volts to regulator. Orange is a 3.3 volts out. Brown is the earth or ground or whatever you want to call it. And the yellow one is actually connected to the output of the daughter board that holds the ESP chip. So at the moment, I've got this little breadboard power supply supplying 5 volts to the regulator. The 3.3 volts is just tucked into a spare hole, as is the output from the ESP. And then I've got a spare... Um, black wire here that will give me the earth back to the 5 volts. So if I take this one and touch it here on the relay you can hear the relay operates. So we know the relay is okay. If I check the operation of the system Alexa socket 1 on Alexa, socket one off. Okay. We can see that the ESP board is working okay because it's controlling that LED, or at least the bit of that, of that board is uh, is controlling that particular LED. The yellow wire is connected to the line that powers the FET, and the FET switches the earth to the relay. So the ESP is putting out 3.3 volts. So in theory. If I put 3.3 volts on that line, if everything's okay, the relay will operate. So let's do that. And as you can see, the relay's operated. You might have heard it, but the red LEDs come on. And if I take that out, it goes off. Put it back in again, it comes on. So what does that mean then? Well, that means that there's nothing wrong with the regulator. It means there's nothing wrong with the relay. It means there's nothing wrong with the FET. It must be the signal out of the ESP chip. Okay, so I was really careful when I soldered that uh, that yellow wire on not to make the contact back with the daughter board. Um, so I could show you the state of the S26 as it was. Um, explaining some of the symptoms, obviously as I was pressing the button and getting some reaction, occasional reaction from the relay, that must have been flex on the board and allowing that contact to make and break. Why it was switching on and off, uh, at random, I don't know, I can only think it might have been a little bit of heat expansion as as, a, as rooms got warmer or cooler and that caused that contact to make or break. It was an interesting investigation to do. I hope you enjoyed watching it and uh, thank you very much. Bye bye.